How about them apples? It is almost April and it's in Maine and it's snowing. I love it. You want a cup of coffee? Right here. Here it is. The obligatory. See you guys on the flip side. I'm pretending like I'm puffing on a pipe. My new little pipe that I got. Vintage British estate pipe. So, um, yeah, uh, another cool hobby of mine. What can I say? I've got entirely too many hobbies, as my wife always tells me. The latest count, probably 76 or something. Be that as it may, I'm going to put this thing away for now. Today, welcome one and all. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you got to look the part. <clears throat> Dressed up a little bit for today's occasion, if I may. Uh, yes. And the reason being, we're going to be discussing classical music, finally. You know, I've been meaning to make a video about classical music and classical records. And uh, lo and behold, the other day, as I am preparing to wander and move into Studio A, which is nearing completion, uh, come later this week, on Easter weekend, as a matter of fact, we're just waiting for flooring to be done, the electrician will pop in. And uh, we should be ready to move in. But again, I digress. So as I'm preparing to get into my new Studio A, I'm going through some records. And uh, I unbox, you know, one record box, another record box. And lo and behold, I run into a couple of my favorite classical records that I haven't seen or heard in well over, well, I guess over two years now, uh, which is kind of catastrophic. But, uh, you know, I, I did purchase a couple of other classical records in the meantime that I'm going to actually also be discussing today. But anyway, classical music, it's very special, very near and dear to me personally, as I'm sure it is to many of you out there. And for the simple fact that, you know, it's the foundation, the Western classical music is the foundation for really Western music, right? We started with the monophonic uh, era of music back in the medieval times. And that was just, you know, one instrument playing or a single voice. Then we got into homophonic uh, music, which added a second element and accompaniment to that first original voice or instrument. And then of course we ended up with polyphonic music and polyphonic music is all around us. And of course, I'm curious if there's any DEI woke agents listening and surprised that they haven't uh, outlawed homophonic music discussion yet. But anyway, totally different subject. I had to throw that in there. I mean, come on, you have to. Generally speaking, when you're talking about Western classical music, there are six periods that classical works are fall under or are categorized in. Hopefully my memory serves me. So it starts with medieval, which kind of ran from about 500 AD to 1400. Then you have the Baroque era. Then you have the Renaissance era, which of course, actually no, Renaissance came before Baroque, excuse me. Renaissance, then the Baroque era, so now we're in the 17th century, 1750s. Then you have what basically, when, when you talk to people, hey, do you like classical music? They'll frequently say, oh yes, of course. Well, you know, who's your favorite classical uh, artist or musician or, or orchestra or symphony? And they'll come up with, you know, Beethoven, Mozart, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Which of course, ironically enough, is part of the classical period of classical music. So that's that span of about 90 to 100 years from the 1730s to about the 1830s, 1840s. And then we have the Romantic period, of course, and that's where you have um, the, the great Romanticism getting associated back to classical music, which then morphs into sort of that, you know, again, 18th century, into the late 19th century. And then we have beginning sort of the early 19th century. So the turn of the last century, we have, um, you know, Gustav Mahler, etc., 
and uh, they carry from about 1920, 1910 into the modern era, and that would be the sixth uh, genre of classical music, so to speak. So it's that 20th, 21st century uh, classical music that, uh, you know, some find has gotten a little off the rails at times. Uh, it became very sort of, it's, it almost became like jazz, right? It, it became very um, detached from the previous classical periods. People were experimenting with new styles, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, lots of crazy music has come out of that modern or modernist era of classical music. But today, we're going to be discussing something very special. So the first thing I want to start off with, actually, which is kind of funny because it's literally the first record that was in my stash that I pulled out of my box, uh, Jean-Marc Hattari. So Jean-Marc Hattari uh, pinged me, or I pinged him. Gosh, I can't even remember it anymore. I tell you, these last two years have been such a blur. But uh, I pinged him or he pinged me one or the other probably about two years ago. And he said, hey, I saw some of your videos and I'd love to send you a record. And um, he introduced himself as, a, so first of all, he's a conductor. He's French, lives in Paris. And he brought it upon himself to recreate and reissue the great repertoire of French classical music on the French famous classical music labels um, and bring it back to life, right? And, and the process that he's doing it with is nothing short of bespoke, right? I mean, it's really, you know, you got gold foiled, um, hand printed, hand stamped artwork, uh, you know, all manual letterpress, hand press stuff. Uh, I think the records are actually done at either Optimal or Palace, one or the other. But this is, of course, the great Claude Debussy. And uh, we are being entertained by the equally wonderful, wonderful Marcel Mayer. She was actually a personal friend of Claude. And uh, they did a bunch of these recordings. Actually, most of her, Mayer, Mayer's recordings... Uh, we're on the Francais Le Discophile label uh, in France. And this particular recording is a mono. And so he's uh, playing, or she, excuse me, she's playing his preludes. There you go. And, uh, you know, gosh, again, it's glorious. It's wonderful. You know, she's such an uh, incredible talent. I mean, she's obviously played so many other works by so many other classical um, artists, but she, she was particularly fond of Debussy. And this is like, you can totally hear her playing out of her heart and soul. Um, anyway, absolutely fantastic record. Now what's particularly interesting, again, let me put this away for a second, is that Jean-Marc actually also published a book on French classical recordings, if I can sort of go through that real quick. Um, there is somewhere in here, there is a, oh yeah, there we go. Towards the end, you see all the labels. Uh, and these are all French uh, recorded artists and uh, classical works um, that, you know, hopefully at some point he will no doubt continue to reissue stuff. He's been telling me that he's at the cusp of getting one or two more records out. But then obviously COVID and all that stuff hit. So, and he's a one-man show and, you know, he's he's learning as he goes, so to speak. But uh, really excited for this one to, to see more of his stuff. Uh, the production quality, again, is incredible. And, uh, you know, look, there's no no shortage of works that he could pull out of this book that he wrote. So, anyway, I strongly recommend if you're into mono music, if you're into Debussy, if you're into um, piano, and Debussy's Preludes, uh, Marcel Mayer, she did a fabulous job with this, so highly, highly recommended. Next up on the agenda, this was actually a disc uh, that was in the same box. It's uh, Michael Murray. Uh, this is a good old Telarc direct-to-disc from the late 70s, probably mid-70s, uh, playing great organ music. 
Um, and this is at the uh, Metuen Memorial Music Hall. He plays works by Widor, Virnet, Dupre, uh, Karg Ellert, Marcello, and, uh, you know, as with all Telarc recordings, absolutely incredible. I mean, you really feel the space, the hall, the, uh, the rumble, the grumble, the power of the organ. Just spectacular. Highly, highly recommended you get it. Uh, these are not expensive. I think $15, $20 should get you a copy. So anyway, that was a great one. Um, next up, the great, incomparable. Hector Berlioz with his Symphonie Fantastique. Oh, C'est bon. And uh, directed by Kojen. And this is Professor Johnson. Uh, world famous recording. One of his world famous recordings. On reference recordings, of course. Utah Symphony. Hello, Wilson Audio. Um, just smashing. So this is one of those. I think this was in, in Pearson's. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was in Pearson's. If it's not, why wasn't it? Recommended classical works. Uh, in fact, it's so recommended, and, and Professor Johnson and the crew at Reference Recordings knew so much about Symphonie Fantastique, which, of course, has a tragic ending, like so many of these symphonies do, um, that they actually... So this is pressed on 45 RPM, two discs, of course, and the third disc contains, excuse me, the second disc contains the material on both sides uh, because they knew that you're going to play it to death as a demo disc. And, uh, of course, you're going to go bananas with it. And so they wanted to give you the ability to play it uh, one side, second side, one side, second side, etc. So, I, you know, I think I posted this on Instagram the other day. I hadn't played this in forever and I put it on and I tell you, if someone comes to you and says, well, vinyl can't do this or that or the other, you just put this disc on and believe you me, uh, there's going to be wet spots on the floor. So anyway, just a warning, just a little warning. So anyway, that's the great Berlioz playing um, his Symphonie Fantastique. Then a record that I got very recently uh, from the lovely team at Impex, as a matter of fact, uh, the great Bob Donnelly, check out the interview that I did. I'll post a link to it below with him a couple of weeks ago where he discusses various works that he did with, uh, with Impex and what he's working on, etc. So he picked Heifetz, the Lark. Heifetz, of course, one of the great violinists of the era. Um, this, so when he played this for me maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, an original and we were just both sitting there. It's that first piece uh, with uh, Emmanuel Bay, which is uh, a work by Castellanovo Tedesco. And uh, there's a little lark, in case you didn't know it was about a bird. Um, and so we were just both sitting there completely transfixed by the power of an organ and a violin playing together uh, and creating just absolutely incredible stuff. And of course, Heifetz, Yasha, um, just taking it to the next level. I mean, he truly is uh, uh, spectacular on violin. And uh, yeah, this is something, if you're curious about classical music, if you're into classical music, uh, or if you're just sort of like, hey, you know, I, I, people keep talking about it. Check this out. You're going to flip. Very, very cool stuff. Next up. Ooh, this is a special one. This is an old speaker's corner. Mozart clarinet concertos one and three. Um, by um, And the horn concertos on side B. And just, gosh, absolutely fantastic. I love Mozart. Uh, what a talent. And this, this uh, lays it all to bear. Ooh, this one was even cleaned by Perfect Vinyl Forever. Um, yeah, just absolutely fantastic. Peter Mag, uh, the London Symphony, what a great orchestra. You know, that's one thing that's, that's uh, it, when people ask me, you know, why is classical music so special? For the simple fact that you're not only listening to the composer or the artist, but you're also listening to the conductor and the performer or the orchestra. 
And so everyone adds a little variation to it. Everyone reads it slightly differently. You know, you have Karyon playing Beethoven symphonies. Like, rum, bum, bum, ba, and then you have someone like Bernstein playing. And it's the same work, but it just comes across very different emotionally. And so, you know, Bernstein, the, the great romanticist that he was, um, he adds a little schmaltz to it. And so um, it's, yeah, you can totally tell, right? I mean, it's, it's, you're listening to the same piece, but you hear it differently. And so that's one of the many reasons that classical music is just so fascinating and uh, such a delight to get into. And then, of course, no review could be complete without the great Deutsche Grammophon 70s reissues from the original four-track tapes where they're basically mastering directly from those four-track tapes, or I should say cutting directly from those four-track tapes and um, bending the, uh, the, the surround channels into the mix. And you just get this incredible sense of, of the hall, the playmanship. Uh, this is the, the Richard Strauss, Tod und Verklärung. Vier letzte Lieder. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, first of all, it's Karajan. Second of all, it's Strauss. Uh, two Austrians found themselves. And so, um, you know, just brilliant music, first and foremost, but absolutely amazing recording. These new four-track reissues, highly, highly recommended. Obviously, they're out and about on YouTube. There's all kinds of videos, et cetera, et cetera, written form as well. So you can read up on it, but it's been spectacularly well done and huge shout out to the DG team uh, for having done such incredible work. And then, of course, there's this box set that I just got recently, uh, Steinberg conducting with the Boston Symphony, the BSO as it was known, and he's doing works by Holst, uh, Strauss again, also sprach Zarathustra. And then, of course, uh, Matisse, um, the Amala Symphony uh, by Paul Hindemith. And again, same thing. I mean, on, on the planet, man, I, so I have an original of this. And I tell you, the difference in sound quality is nothing short of stunning. It really is. I, you know, it amazes me what they were able to get out of these four track tapes that simply was not available to them when they originally came out in the 70s, regardless of what pressing you have, whether it's a hot stamper or not, or first, second, third pressing, this is the one to have, without a doubt. So anyway, oh, and I have uh, 455 out of 2100. Look at that. Well, anyway, so this was the uh, the little uh, primer in classical music. Hope you enjoyed the show. There's going to be much more coming as soon as Studio A is done, and we're able to get in. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, let me take a provisional puff a pre-puff of my new pipe that i'll be adding to my collection and um we will see you guys on the flip side thanks for tuning in as always and uh yeah stay tuned there's gonna be more coming i promise i guarantee it cheers everyone <laughs>